This video will show you how you can light and compose your scenes for maximum atmosphere, intensity and effect. This is obviously focused on a Halloween setting, but the principles can be applied to any scene you've created. And it coincides with my Halloween competition, so make sure you check that out as the winner will receive a Samsung SSD. All the links in the description. And of course, if you like what I do, then do check out my website for more great content. So first of all, if you take a look at the scene without any lighting influence, it's kind of dull and really flat. I'll quickly talk through how I made it though. We've got an image in the background here, which is a basic image from Pexels, so it's copyright free. I've made it curved. If I wanted to animate the camera, then it would kind of move a little bit more with the camera, which I have done here. You can see the path there. Then the background kind of curves around so it doesn't disappear so easily. The other thing I've done with the background, if I click on that and go back to the shading editor, if I show you what it looks like originally by control left clicking on the actual image, you can see there that it's got a lot of yellow in it and it's actually kind of an autumn scene. I put it through a color ramp, so if I control left click on that, you can see I've converted all the light parts to a very bluish hue, which gives us the final result, which you can see fairly well in Eevee. In front of that, I've got some fog images. So if I isolate those, you can see what that looks like. I'll put a link in the description to these. They're for personal use only, but I think they're really useful for creating more atmosphere. It's important to get one with an alpha channel. That's a background alpha that you can plug into the alpha here. So from this image here, it's got an alpha channel that's plugged into the alpha. That is that transparency. It's really easy to set these up with import images as planes add-on. So edit preferences, add-ons, type in image, and there's the import image as planes add-on. Now when I close that down and press Shift A, I've now got under image, images as planes. That will bring it in with the nodes set up so that it has the transparency. I've also plugged that into a color ramp to give it a blue hue as well. And I've placed four of those across my scene and you can kind of see the effects in Eevee here. Obviously this is without the final lighting, which is all important. I'll come out of isolation mode and talk about the base. This is a PBR setup and I got this from Polyhaven. I can't completely remember which one it was. It could have been forest ground, I think, something like that anyway. These sort of rocky images, they work absolutely fine. You just need something with a bit of bump because in this case, the lighting from the scene means you can't really see much detail except for that bump. And I've set this up in the normal PBR way, so base color, roughness, normal, and the displacement, although that's not really doing much in this case. And I didn't really need that. I've got other tutorials on how to set up PBR, so links in the description. Links in the description as well for the pumpkin, which I've worked on recently, and the candles. The last thing is all these twigs. They're really straightforward. If I click on one of those, you can see it's just a cylinder. I'll even go into edit mode and wireframe, and you can see they're just cylinders that are a bit distorted, and they're overlapping, as you can see there. Very, very basic, nothing complicated. Once you've done one kind of stick, you can duplicate that, move it slightly, and then this end here I've duplicated, scaled down, and eventually made a bit of a stick. And you can see them all in there, just spread out on the floor, and I've spread them out around the camera to kind of frame the image. So we've got this very sort of flat looking image here, and the most important thing, as you can imagine, is the lighting. So let's go across to render mode. This will take a few moments for me because I've got high detailed sculpts. I've done a bit of a decimate, but not much. So there's a lot of polygons in the scene. I'll turn the denoise on the viewport, although I was having lots of issues with that and I had to do denoising in the compositor in the end. But you can kind of see the effects of the lighting and most of the lighting is done by these practical lights, so the candles in the scene. The lights themselves I've put up really high in terms of their wattage, much more than a normal candle because we don't really have many settings for changing the aperture of the camera in an effective way, so it's just a case of pushing the wattage of your lights up. So if I zoom into this area here, make it a bit bigger you can see that every candle has an extra light on it and you can just get away with using the emission texture from your candle flame i left it in there because i was experimenting with both cycles and eevee for the render i'll show you what eevee looks like and it's got a more cartoony effect i'd need to put a lot more lighting in the scene because when i go across to cycles a major difference is that all my emission textures are actually giving off light so the background image for example if i zoom out and select that you can see that i've plugged the color into the emission and given it a strength of five. Without that, if I put it down to zero, it's getting closer to that kind of Eevee look. And actually I think it looks better about two, so I might change it. Each of my fog, you can see as well, I've put those through a color to make them blue and into the emission and given them a strength of two as well. 
And if I put that up to let's say five, you can see the results of that looking extra spooky there. I might experiment with another render and put it up to four because it looks quite interesting. So those emissions are actually giving light onto my scene, which is one of the big differences between EV and cycles. The other lights I've got in my scene are quite important. I've got one here and here. Let's come around to top view and take a look. They're both lighting it from the back. That gives us this sort of rim light here. If I hide this for the moment, you can see that rim disappear and the pumpkins kind of blend into the background. I press Alt H to bring that back and then suddenly you can see that blue glow there. So a backlight, and I've got two, one either side, separates your object from the background and it makes sense because we've got this background blue glow from the moonlight supposedly glowing onto the pumpkins, hence why I've colored them both blue. If we come across to the lighting settings, you can see they're blue there. Not a particularly high strength for this scene. All my objects are very big and the power does depend on the size of your objects. I probably should have put them down to actual life size, but I always find the depth of field is a problem if I do that. So I keep everything really big and put the power of my lights up really high. More about that in a second though. So only two artificial lights, should we say, in the scene, giving it that rim light and kind of giving the background an imaginary boost onto the pumpkins here. So the last thing, if I scroll out and click on my camera, I'll scroll down to depth of field. I'm still convinced the depth of field settings don't make sense in Blender because an f-stop of 0.1, I don't think you can actually get a lens that does that, but that's what I had to put in to get any of this foreground blur and background blur, which I think looks quite effective. It kind of frames the image when I put these twigs here and it helps us focus on the actual focal point of the image. The last thing I did was in the compositing tab, if we go up to there, I'm using the denoise within the compositor rather than optics because I was having lots of problems, probably because I've got so many polygons in the scene, and a glare node. I do talk about that in my intro to compositing, links in the description. So hopefully that's given you a good idea of how you can render your Halloween scenes in terms of thinking about composition, atmospherics like the fog, and the lighting. Do you remember the Halloween competition? The last day being tomorrow, and I'll post the results on Saturday. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.